Hey everyone, this is Nick and Ubuntu 23.04 has reached final feature freeze, which means nothing will change from now and its final release date on Thursday. So it's high time that we took a look at what's new in this release. And as always, I'll also take a tour of all the official Ubuntu variants so you know what's different if you don't use GNOME. But whichever desktop environment you like using, you'll probably like using our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safings Portmaster. Portmaster is an all-in-one tool to easily take your privacy to the next level. And it's a tool I use myself on all of my Linux devices. Portmaster lets you automatically block all trackers and malware in every application you run on your computer. Not just your web browser, but everything you run. It's easy to use with defaults already in place that lets you just set it and forget it. But if you like to configure every rule and every app, you also can. Portmaster is completely free and open source and also free of charge, as it's funded by users that subscribe to the SPN, a super-powered VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So if you want to easily improve the privacy of your system, whatever the Linux distro you use or even on Windows, click the link in the description below and download the Portmaster for free. So let's begin with the Ubuntu specific features that you'll get in 23.04. First is the new installer. It's been in the works for years now and it's finally shipping by default. It uses Flutter, that Google-backed toolkit to build cross-platform apps, and it looks much nicer than the previous one. Everything feels more polished, more subdued and modern, although the screens are presented in the same order as before. You do get to pick your light and dark theme at install, and the slides you're shown when installing have been much improved as well to present the various features, they now use different layouts and full-size screen captures and better text. Do note that the new installer does not support ZFS or ZFS, however you like to pronounce this thing. This file system is no longer supported. You can still do a fresh install of Ubuntu with this file system by downloading another ISO which has the old installer. If you already have a system set up with ZFS, an upgrade in place will not change anything. You can still keep your existing file system. Now, installs should also be faster, at least for the minimal install, because the installer no longer has to install everything and then remove unneeded packages. It just installs what's needed. Active Directory support has also been improved with support for enterprise proxy, app confinement, and network shares. And all of this will also be backported to older Ubuntu LTS that are still supported. There's also a mini ISO that only weighs 150 megabytes and it lets you pick the version of Ubuntu you want to install and it will then download the relevant packages to proceed. Now next on the desktop is the Ubuntu dock. You now get a small counter on top of an application's icon when this app has a notification and when the app is open. So basically, if you have a notification in your date and time panel, the app icon will reflect that and update when you close these notifications. Apps don't have to do anything specific to support that. As long as they use the native notifications for Linux, they will get the badge. The Ubuntu team also wanted to add the tiling. The Ubuntu team also wanted to add the tiling assistant extension, but it's not in there right now, so I'm pretty sure that it's been pushed back and will happen for 23.10. The Yaru theme didn't change, really, apart from replacing the brand new fantastic LibreOffice icons with designs of their own, which, in my opinion, are not as good. It's to be noted that the quick settings menu does look a bit weird and still lacks contrast with Yaru's light theme, with that pale orange, almost pinkish tone over a white background. I'm not a fan of the general look of the GNOME shell elements on Ubuntu. Apart from that, Ubuntu 23.04 is not an LTS release, so it will get 9 months of support. It uses the Linux kernel 6.2, the codename is Lunar Lobster, and it has the usual new wallpapers in the same usual colors. So, nothing really groundbreaking here. I guess the dock badges are nice, but I could not find a way to disable them if you don't like them. So yeah, Ubuntu generally did not add much on top of GNOME 44. Because that's what you're getting here, GNOME 44 and all of its new shiny goodness. 
The big changes though are in the quick settings menu. It's now more descriptive, where before the title of a quick setting button would be replaced with the current thing it connects to or uses, like a Wi-Fi network or a performance profile. Now you get a small title and the thing that is currently activated, which is definitely easier to understand. I mean, it never really was complicated to understand with the icons and all, but I guess it's still a good change. The Bluetooth settings are also now more functional with the ability to quickly connect to a device you previously paired your computer with. You can't see unpaired devices from here, so you'll still need to open the Bluetooth settings to connect a new device, but it's still a nice quick workflow improvement to connect a Bluetooth headset, for example. There's also a new icon for the screenshot tool, although that won't revolutionize how you use your desktop, and you can now click on the speaker icon in the menu to mute or unmute your computer. You also get support for background apps. Previously in GNOME, apps running without a window just could not be seen or accessed unless they had a system tray icon. Now, backgrounds apps will be listed in the same quick settings menu, but it still lacks a lot of interaction before it can even be considered a replacement for the system tray. You can't open a right-click menu for the app, you can't bring it back to the front or open a window for it, you can just see them and close them. And it also seems to only work with Flatpak applications for now. None of the Ubuntu snaps seem to register in that background app section. I hope this feature will be extended in the future with support for right-click or maybe opening at least a window by clicking on the app. We'll have to see. Now, in the settings, there are also a few changes, most notably in the mouse and touchpad panel. First, you can now decide to disable mouse pointer acceleration. And second, you now get small videos that will let you better understand natural scrolling mode and classic scrolling mode for the touchpad or for the mouse. You'll also be able to see your kernel version in the About panel. You can now disable overlay scroll bars in the accessibility settings, which also have been revamped so you don't have to do as much navigation to explore the different categories. And in the network settings, you'll be able to configure WireGuard VPNs. GNOME 44 is a great improvement over GNOME 43, and Ubuntu doesn't neuter it in any way by removing a specific feature, so just for that, it's worth the upgrade. Now, let's talk about the applications bundled here. First is the file manager, which gained back the ability to unfold folders in the list view. So now you get a real tree view. That's cool, but you'll need to enable it in the settings of the file manager. More importantly, now you get image thumbnails in the file picker. Finally! Gnome developers managed to fix that glaring omission that's been plaguing Gnome for more than a decade. So that old meme can now be put to rest. Ubuntu also ships Firefox 112, Thunderbird 102.10, and LibreOffice 7.5.2, plus the new GNOME text editor. The Ubuntu Software Center, though, is still the same old, lesser version of GNOME software. It doesn't include the latest information on applications, like license information, links to the websites, age ratings, and the like. It's still not great, and although they do show the categories for Snap Apps now, these category pages just don't hold a candle to what GNOME has been doing on GNOME software, even in terms of performance. If you're going to fork your own software center, at least apply what Upstream has been working on afterwards. Seriously. Okay, now let's move on to the Ubuntu flavors, because Ubuntu isn't just GNOME, you know? First is a change that will affect all Ubuntu flavors. Flatpak is no longer installed by default in the flavors where it was. You can still install it yourself with the command line, and if it was installed before, it will be kept after the upgrade. I do not agree with this change. I don't think it's great to push only snaps instead of other packaging formats. If a flavor wants to add them, they should be able to, but it's also not a big deal. Now, Kubuntu 23.04 comes with KDE 5.27, with its much improved multi-monitor handling, a better Discover app to install software, tiling capabilities, although these aren't quite on par with what you'd get with a window manager, especially for keyboard shortcuts, which this KDE implementation lacks. You will also get a first-run tour that presents a bunch of KDE's obscure but amazing features, 
and you'll also get pipe wire by default instead of pulse audio and it uses the same internals as the regular Ubuntu. It is a mandatory install if you use Kubuntu or at least a non-LTS release. The current Ubuntu 22.10 uses KD Plasma 5.25. So you're getting two updates worth this cycle. You definitely need to upgrade. Ubuntu Mate 23.04, as far as I could find, only updated the internals and the repos to match the regular Ubuntu variant, with Pulse Audio being replaced with Pipewire, but the desktop stayed the exact same as in 22.10, which seems logical since the latest version of Mate 1.26 dates from 2021. Ubuntu Budgie 23.04 is a big update. It gets new applets with a better weather panel, plus better hot corner support through a nice little settings window that lets you set what you want to activate and after which delay. And all screen edges are now usable as well, not just corners. The window shuffler applet now lets you do quarter tiling using the mouse or the keyboard. And the user indicator has been replaced with a more modern one. And you also get Budgie 10.7, a big update with a new application indexer that should give more consistent results between the menu and the run dialog. There's dual GPU support to launch apps using the dedicated GPU. The run dialog will now better fit your screen. There's a new screenshot tool to replace the GNOME one they used before and notifications will now fade in and out and shouldn't cause screen flickering anymore. Finally, the Raven panel has a new API for developers to build widgets that can go into it and you can now reposition these widgets how you like. Another mandatory update. If you use Ubuntu Budgie, move to 23.04. There's a lot to like here. On the Xubuntu front, there's a new Xubuntu minimal install with only the bare utilities and no added apps. And Xubuntu now uses XFC 4.18 with a much better Thunar file manager that includes an image preview sidebar and editable toolbar and file highlighting features to attribute a specific color to a file or folder. Recursive search is also supported and you'll get on-screen notifications for undo and redo actions. You can also configure the panel length of XFC in pixels. The clock applet is now much more configurable and you get a bunch of new options like disabling header bars in modal dialogues, show or hide a delete option in the desktop context menu, or pick a multi-monitor behavior to apply by default to any new monitor you connect. Here as well, if you're a Xubuntu user, mandatory update. You don't want to miss out on 4.18. Ubuntu Cinnamon 23.04 just joined the official flavors list, and it will give you the Cinnamon desktop, used mostly in Linux Mint, with the Yaru theme on top of it, Nemo as the file manager, plus Celluloid, Gthumb, Gnome Photos, and the usual LibreOffice, Thunderbird, and Firefox. It doesn't come with the Mint apps, also called X apps, and it uses GNOME software for updates and app installs. So what you'll get here is the Cinnamon desktop shell, but not the Cinnamon desktop environment that you would get in Mint with all the associated apps. You'll still get all the utilities to configure Cinnamon, but none of the default Mint apps. So if that's what you like, you need to stick with Mint. I couldn't find anything about what's new in Ubuntu Unity, which is also now an official flavor. I'm guessing they didn't have that much time to really update Unity since 22.10, but you'll get the usual internals changes, pipe wire and the like. Same for Lubuntu and LXQt. I couldn't find any release notes, although I would expect them to not have moved to the very latest LXQt 1.3, which was just released last week. As per Ubuntu Studio, it also uses Pipewire by default, but they recommend moving back to Pulse Audio for professional work. It also uses KDE 5.27, like Kubuntu, and will benefit from the same improvements, and all the default graphics editing, video editing, and audio apps got a version bump to the latest available. So, 23.04 is not a fascinating release, but it still brings a few Ubuntu-specific things, like the new installer or the dark badges. The flavors are where the changes are at, though, with Ubuntu Budgie and Kubuntu 23.04 being really, really big upgrades, and Xubuntu also having a lot of cool changes this time around. So, if you're an Ubuntu user and you don't stick to LTS releases, then absolutely mandatory upgrade 
whatever other flavor you're using. You'll get 9 months of support and you'll get much better features, stability, newer internals, no question. If you're stuck on an LTS, then this release won't change your mind. And if you already don't like or even hate Ubuntu, then there's nothing here to change your mind. Just like I won't change my mind about our sponsor. If you're looking to buy a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, stop buying Windows computers and trying to slap Linux on it and expecting everything to work. Buy something that was designed to run Linux and remove all that headache and elbow grease. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that do just that. They run Linux out of the box. They have a huge range of devices for all price points and all needs. They're all very configurable and customizable with your own logos, your own keyboard layouts. You can pick the components you prefer. And all laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable with the battery, the SSD and the RAM all being accessible. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux, Click the link in the description below and buy yourself something from Tuxedo. They're really good. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, that can happen. And there's a dislike button for that. And there's also a comment section to tell me why I suck. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are tons of links in the description below for my social media and ways to support me like LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, whatever else. You know how this works. So thank you all for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!